Are you planning a Mediterranean cruise on P&O Arvia and want some ideas of things to do in each port? In this video we share what we did in La Coruna, Alicante, La Spezia, Marseille, Barcelona and Cadiz, including the places we went and some of the food we ate. You can book shore excursions with P&O in each of these ports, but we decided to explore each port on our own because they were really easy to do independently and very walkable. We hope this video gives you ideas of things to do, so let's start with the very first port we visited, La Coruna. The good news is that cruise ships dock in the downtown area of La Coruna and it's a short, flat, five-minute walk into the city. No need to get shuttle bus or taxi. Good morning, everybody. We are now at our first port of call, which is at uh, La Coruna. At the moment, we're just sat in a cafe. Uh, we have had a little wander around, haven't we? we just, yeah. It's really easy port because you walk straight off the ship and into the town. Um, so we've had a look through some of the, the little streets. There's like a little dock area with um, like a marina with um, boats and stuff. And we are just having a, a little cappuccino in the cafe and just watching everyone get off the ship. And there's a little park as well. But yeah, it's like just a nice little place to stop. And um, we've got plenty of time today. We're not going to do anything like other than we are searching out something in particular, aren't we? Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I could eat it now, but I'm going to pick too soon. We're going to do some churros. You order your churros and then you order some um, like hot chocolate as well. So you dip your churros in the chocolate. So we're looking forward to that. That's our, just our little thing for today, isn't it? But before our churros, we decided to take a stroll to the far side of the marina, where you'll find the monument Lady of Carmen, the patroness saint of people of the sea, and she faces out towards the sea. There's a nice promenade here which takes you to the castle of San Anton. This 16th century fortress has served as a defensive building, prison and a hospital, but now it's a museum open to the public. You can get a good view of the castle without going inside, but entry is only two euros if you want to learn more about its history. We took a left at the castle and headed back towards the town, stopping at the old city walls, complete with cannons. We were a bit worried as the cannons were pointing straight at Arvia. Maria Peter Square is one of the top places to visit during your day in La Coruna. This huge square was built to honour the bravery of one woman who stood up to the English forces in the 16th century when a fleet of galleons headed by Sir Francis Drake attempted to take control of the waterways from England to Portugal. La Coruna was a key port that the English wanted to control, but Maria Peter was determined to stop this from happening. You'll find a statue of her in the square in her honour. After our walk around La Coruna, it was time to try some churros from Bonilla a la Vista in the main street. The freshly made churros are only 30 cents each, but we definitely recommend ordering a cup of chocolate to dip them in. Then it was time to get back on board for a late lunch and enjoy the sail away from port. Overall thoughts on La Coruna is that it's an easy, walkable city that has lots of free and low cost things to do. Why not take a look at our full guide to visiting La Coruna on a cruise? We've left a link in this video's description for you. As Arvia reaches the Mediterranean, you'll pass through the Strait of Gibraltar and it's really worth getting out on the open decks to catch a glimpse of the Rock of Gibraltar. On the port side is Europe and the starboard side is Africa. You may also be lucky enough to spot some dolphins who like to hang out in this area because of the special type of current which provides an abundance of food. Our next port of call on our cruise was Alicante and although the walk into town is a little bit further than La Coruna, it's still flat. We took our time to walk just over a mile to the promenade, which is a really pleasant area that runs along the waterfront. It's worth knowing that P&O does offer a shuttle bus out of the port area that's included for guests on the select rate, but on our cruise they didn't appear to be charging saver rate passengers, so if you don't fancy the walk, it's definitely worth trying. There are bars and cafes running along the side of the promenade and further down you'll find stalls where you can pick up some souvenirs. We had a browse to break up the walk and then headed into the town to Mushroom Street. This quirky little shopping street features a yellow brick road, which guides you past toadstool houses and tall mushroom sculptures. The street was given this whimsical facelift in 2013 to attract more tourists and we thought it was a fun little place to walk around. After all that walking, we thought it would only be right to sit down in one of the cafes on the promenade and sample some sangria. Alicante is a nice and easy cruise port and although it doesn't have the famous landmarks, it's nice for a wander at a leisurely pace. 
When Aria docks in La Spezia, you'll certainly have a few options to choose from. You could take a trip to Florence, but be aware this is a two hour journey each way. You could also choose to visit Pisa, either with a cruise excursion or on your own on the train. My mum and dad decided to do this and found it really easy. In La Spezia, we opted to visit the Cinque Terre, which are five pretty villages built along the coast very close to La Spezia. We took a taxi to La Spezia Central train station, and this is also where you'll catch the train to Pisa. There's a free shuttle bus out of the port to the cruise terminal, and you can walk to the train station, which is about 20 to 25 minutes, but we opted for a taxi costing 15 euros. Once you get to the train station, take a right and you'll find the Cinque Terre office, where you can buy a card for 18 euros 20 that allows you unlimited train journey between each of the villages for the day, access to the hiking trails, free Wi-Fi on the train, and free toilets in the train stations. Morning from La Spezia. Yes, morning everybody, another nice day here. We're uh, at the train station at the moment, yeah. just waiting for our train to go to Cinque Terre. We've just missed one, but they're <laughs> quite frequent anyway, so... So, yeah. something that you might want to think about if you go to La Spezia is getting a, a Cinque Terre pass. And this is, I think it was like 18 euros... 18, 20. 18 euros 20 for the day. And that just means that you can ride the train up and down that path, uh, the, the track that goes to all the Cinque Terre villages. So, last month we went to first two which were <laughs> Manarola and Ria Maggiore I want to say that it's easy for you to say and then uh, we are gonna skip the third one because it's up a big hill and it's not by the coast and, and apparently we're gonna it's go... not the nicest one neither is it yeah so then we're gonna today we're going to Venaza Venazza and we're going to Monterosa which is more of like a beachy village so we are going to go there today. Yeah, we've got to a pass go anywhere to come back on the train, yeah. so it's all included. It's for a, for the full day, isn't it? Yes, one day unlimited use, yeah. which so is pretty good, crossed. really, compared to what some of the cruise line excursion prices we've seen. So, yeah, oh, mental! Some of the prices you won't believe. But yeah, they're in business to make money. It's really easy to get from the cruise terminal to the train station as well. So as soon as you get out of the cruise terminal you'll um, see some taxis and you can just ask them to go to the train station and it was 15 euros yeah which isn't bad really it isn't bad. gets you there quickly yeah bye for now bye soon you could visit all five villages in one day at a push, but we would highly recommend you prioritise Rio Maggiore, Manarola and Vernazza because these are the prettiest villages in our opinion. These definitely live up to the photos you see online and we thoroughly enjoyed taking in the beautiful views and strolling down the narrow streets. We've put together a full guide to visiting the Cinque Terre from La Spezia that you can find in this video's description, including what to do at the train station and what to do in each village. On our way back to Avia, we decided to walk through La Spezia and found a little cafe for a light lunch of fried dough balls and Italian meats before making our way back to the cruise terminal. It's worth mentioning that La Spezia cruise port is not accessible to pedestrians, so p and offers a free shuttle bus in and out of the port area to the cruise terminal. The next port we visited on Avia on our Mediterranean cruise was Marseille. This port has got itself a bad name, but we think it all depends on what you decide to do. Aria docks quite a way out of the city, but the good news is that P&O puts on a free shuttle into Marseille for all passengers. Just don't be surprised if you have to queue for a little while for the bus. We waited about 20 minutes, which wasn't too bad. The shuttle bus dropped us next to the Cathedral La Major, and this is also where you'll catch the bus back to the ship. The cathedral is free to enter, and it's worth looking inside to admire its intricate details like the mosaic floor and the painted ceiling. This cathedral was built in the 1800s and can seat 3,000 people, making it one of the largest cathedrals in France. It's also nice and cool on a hot day. From where the shuttle bus drops you, you can also walk to the Old Port, which has a wide pedestrian area. Here, you can catch the land train to the Notre Dame Cathedral on top of the hill, but the queues can get very long. We'd already queued to get the shuttle bus, so we carried on and found the Vieux Port Canopy, which is a huge stainless steel structure that acts like a giant mirror. It's quite cool to stand and watch people walking on the ceiling. It's here that we caught the metro to Longchamp. Marseille is busy, but its metro stations are not, and it was very straightforward to buy a ticket from the machine. You can choose English on the screen and order your tickets. The maps seem very easy to navigate and much easier than the London Tube. Palais de Longchamp is a must-see in Marseille, and we were really shocked how quiet it was during our visit. Even on the day with three big cruise ships in port, this place was pretty much deserted, so we think everyone had decided to do the land train to the Notre Dame Cathedral instead. This historical monument was built to bring water to the city and has spectacular fountains and water features to show it off. It has free admission and we spent some time admiring the statues and water fountains before heading through to the park behind. In fairness, the park is a park and nothing to shout about, but if you're looking for a quiet spot to enjoy some shade or have a picnic, it's an option.
From here, we made our way back to the old port on the metro and decided to walk through Le Panio district of Marseille. This is miles away from the dirty, grubby streets we were told about by other cruise passengers. There are some lovely little boutique shops selling local items such as soap and we enjoyed seeing some of the interesting street art along the way. Our walk through this area brought us back to the cathedral where we began, but we decided to stay in Marseille a little longer to get a bite to eat. Directly in front and below the cathedral is an area that has been redeveloped in the last few years and it's a really pleasant place to go and get a drink and some food. We decided to go to the Le Halles de la Major, which is a hall of independent food vendors. You can order directly with any of them with a number you collect from the front desk. You find a table and then you wait for it to be delivered. This is perfect if you're in a group and you all want to eat different things. There's all sorts like pizzas, burgers, Thai food, tapas, pastries and cocktails. We shared some prawn Thai noodles and some tempura. It was really tasty. Once we finished, we simply walked across the road to catch the shuttle bus back to Arvia. This is a really helpful service that P&A provides as the port is about 15 minutes drive from the centre of Marseille. Not all cruise lines offer this service in Marseille and there was an MSC ship in port on the same day which charges passengers around €17 Euros for a return shuttle into the city. I have to say well done P&A for offering this free of charge. The fifth port we visited on our Mediterranean cruise on Arvia was Barcelona, one of the busiest cruise ports in Europe. There were plenty of ships in Barcelona with Arvia on the day we visited and we were able to get a shuttle bus from the cruise port to near the Columbus Monument constructed to honour Christopher Columbus. Our plan for today was to explore the Gothic Quarter which is only an 11 minute walk from this statue and runs along one side of Las Ramblas. The Gothic Quarter is characterised by narrow winding streets and medieval buildings that form the heart of the old city. Barcelona was actually founded by the Romans and it was in the Gothic Quarter where they first settled. Near the Cathedral of Barcelona in Placanova, you can spot the old Roman wall and aqueduct, which is quite cool. As well as this, you can see the bronze and aluminium sculpture spelling out Barcino, which is the name the Romans gave it when they first arrived. We enjoyed walking around the narrow streets and coming across medieval buildings and squares like the Place del Rey and passing underneath the covered bridge called the Pont del Bisbe. It appears to be very old and is definitely in keeping with the buildings surrounding it, but it was actually only built in the 1920s. Even so, it's still worth finding so you can walk underneath to get a glimpse of the skull and dagger that was added to the bridge by the designer. This was after his plans to redevelop another area of Barcelona was refused by the local government. It's kind of a rebellious two fingers up to those who stopped his plans. It was really surprising what we saw during our walk through the Gothic Quarter, but the most interesting thing we came across is found down a quiet alley and only has a small sign that reads Temple de August. As we previously mentioned, the Romans settled in Barcelona first and this is one of the last remaining structures still standing. These four Roman pillars are now housed in an apartment block courtyard and are the last remaining pillars of the Temple of Augustus that originally had 34 pillars. This is a hidden gem in the Gothic Quarter that we definitely recommend you seek out. As it's tucked away in this courtyard, there are very few tourists around and it's not something you expect to find in Barcelona. It's open to the public for viewing and there's information on the wall that tells you about the temple and how it ended up in this courtyard. If you're finding this video useful, please give it a like to help more people find it. As we made our way back to Las Ramblas, we came across San Felipe Neri Square, thought to be one of the prettiest squares in Barcelona, but it has a dark history. The square was bombed during the Spanish Civil War and 42 people, mostly children, were killed as they sought shelter. You can still see the holes from the bombs in the walls. Once we got back to Las Ramblas, we headed to La Boqueria to see if we would be lucky enough to get a seat at our favourite tapas bar for lunch. This indoor market is popular and you can definitely see why. There's so much food available, from fresh fish and local meats to fresh fruits, smoothies and sweets. Some things are quite reasonably priced, but be careful as the sweet stall can end up being quite pricey once it's all been weighed. It's interesting to walk around this market, which dates back to 1217, when it began as a street market. It can get busy around lunchtime, and we would recommend you keep your valuables safe whilst here and on Las Ramblas. It's not unsafe, but Barcelona is known for pickpockets in these tourist hotspots. To our surprise, we were in luck with seats at Elquim, and so we decided to have lunch here. As it's so popular, it can be difficult to get a seat at this bar, and we've had to wait 45 minutes before to secure a spot. Everyone sits around the bar area where you can watch the food being freshly prepared right in front of you. And to order, you simply tick everything that you want on the menu sheet and then hand it to one of the chefs. So what did we order? We started with croquettes with ham and cheese and some bread with garlic and oil. We also ordered some fried artichoke chips, which were very crunchy and tasty and they didn't last long. Finally, we ordered slow cooked Iberico pork rib, which was so tender you almost didn't need a knife. 
With our bellies filled, we walked down Las Ramblas and took a detour into Placa Real to enjoy some people watching and see the street performers who rotate around the various cafes and restaurants here. Then it was time to join the big long queue for the shuttle bus back to the ship. It's to be expected really given the amount of passengers on Avia and the time of day. Overall, we really enjoyed our time in Barcelona. Our highlights were definitely finding the Roman columns in the Gothic Quarter and our lunch at El Quim in the market. On to our sixth and final port of our Mediterranean cruise, Cadiz. From here, you can take an excursion to Seville, but as it was our first stop at this port, we decided to stay and explore Cadiz itself. This is a very walkable city, which turns out to be the oldest in Western Europe. You can walk straight off the ship into the centre and we took a slight detour into Plaza España just across the road from the cruise port. It has some nice shaded walkways and an impressive constitution monument. From here you can walk through the warren of narrow streets and small squares like the Flower Market Square. In the morning the central market is just opening and you'll find locals here buying their fresh fruit and veg and fish. In one of the most impressive squares you'll come across is where you'll find the cathedral, which is huge in this relatively small square. You can even see the cathedral from the cruise ship. It's definitely where most tourists will head during their day in Cadiz, and there are outside cafes and bars where you can sit and have a coffee or an ice cream. You can pay around €8 Euros to go inside the cathedral, but to be honest, we're not huge fans of cathedrals and we were more than happy to admire the building from the outside. We opted to take a quick look inside the Santa Cruz church nearby, which was free to enter. Cadiz is located on the Atlantic coast, and so you can also spend a day on the beach or walk to Park Genovese, the largest park in Cadiz and home to over a hundred different species of plants. It has a man-made waterfall that looks like a slice of paradise. We decided to visit this place, which doesn't look like much from the outside, but it's quite a surprise when you enter. Theatre Balbi is an ancient Roman theatre that was only discovered in 1980. Entry is free of charge and there's no need to book in advance. It was thought to be built in around 70 BC and would have been able to hold an audience of 10,000 people. Like the Colosseum in Rome, where you sat depended on your social class, so the richer and more important you were, the closer you sat to the stage. It's so bizarre that this ancient theatre has only recently been discovered and there are residential buildings, offices and a nursery all built on top and around it. The stage would have been underneath these buildings. You can find out more about the theatre in the small museum connected to it. By lunchtime, the central market opens its outer stalls where you can order tapas. This is a busy place to come, but prices are very reasonable. We ordered croquettes, potatoes with mojo sauce, and small shrimp fritters with squid ink that can only be found in Cadiz. They definitely tasted much better than they looked. Another popular thing to eat here is fried fish and seafood. What was interesting but definitely less popular was the local fisherman who turned up with a little table to sell sea urchins. Our visit to Cadiz was very pleasant and we would happily go back on another cruise to see more. We hope that this has given you a flavour of things to do in the Mediterranean port's P&O Arvia visits. Talking of flavour, if you're planning a cruise on Arvia, we'd recommend watching this video next, where we share everything we ate on our 14-night Mediterranean cruise on Arvia. On our channel, you'll also find videos we've created about the entertainment, kids' activities and our inside cabin on P&O Arvia, so why not take a look? Thanks for watching.